Hey guys, welcome back to a new video by Biology Resumption. So today we are going to go through the chapter 5 of the IGCSE Biology Syllabus, which is Enzymes. So this is for the syllabus 2023 to 2025 and 2026 to 2028. So if you do have any questions about this topic, Enzymes, please do feel free to comment in the comment sections below. Thank you so much and let's start off with the video. So today the content is actually very short, so it will just be enzymes and then we are going to go through the learning outcomes. It's just basically describing what's a catalyst, what is an enzyme and why is enzymes very important and describing the enzyme action to the sh with reference to the shape of the active site being complementary and also to investigate and describe the effects of changes in temperature and pH. For extended students, this is only applied to a standard and not for core. So it's just basically explaining how does it uh, enzyme function with temperature and also pH. And yeah, then that's basically it for the others, which is also very similar. So let's start off with catalyst and biological catalyst. <clears throat> so it's very important that you know that metabolism is where it's the sum of all chemical reactions that's going on with a living organism. So remember that we always consume food and how is food broken down other than the processes of our enzymes is also because of our body's metabolic activity. The moment that the body is breaking down something that is already known as a metabolism. And catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of reaction and is not changed by the reaction. What does this mean? It means that if you add a catalyst into a particular reaction, for example, it won't change whatever is going on. It won't change the products and it won't be part of the products also. One thing it helps to do is that it helps to speed up the process where the substrate will become the product quicker. For example, a reaction from A to B it took about 20 minutes. But if you add a catalyst, okay, um, it will shorten it by at least half, meaning like 10 minutes only. So that is the role of the catalyst. It won't be part of the substrate, it won't be part of the products, it will come up from one end to another end. <clears throat> For biological catalyst, it will be a natural substance like enzymes, which increases the rate of reaction. So today we're going to look at only one of the mechanisms of enzyme action which is part of the syllabus which is the lock and key hypothesis. For induced feed, you won't be learning in this syllabus. <clears throat> so let's talk about the lock and key model hypothesis. So it is proposed that the active site and substrate are exactly complementary. What does exactly complementary mean? It means that this particular substrate will bind exactly to the enzyme and it fits 100% correct okay so the active site has a rigid shape it means that it only has that specific shape for the substrate to bind if the substrate do not have the same shape it means that the enzyme won't be able to conduct the reaction and only the substrate with the matching shape can fit the substrate or acts as the key into the rigid active site lock when it fixes it will form an enzyme substrate complex so this is already known as an enzyme substrate complex we have see lock and key complex is almost the same as the enzyme substrate complex okay so now let's see what is the <clears throat> effect of temperature on enzymes so you know that enzymes will always have an optimum temperature so each enzyme in different reactions or different living organisms they have different optimum temperature let's say for example humans we live in the optimum temperature of around 35 to 37 degrees. So therefore, enzymes optimum temperature is at around 37 degrees. So what happens when you increase the temperature is that the molecules will start to move faster. It's um, usual, right? It's like, for example, water is boiling. If you increase the temperature, the water will, will move more rapidly because they have gained more kinetic energy. So the moment they gain more kinetic energy, that's where they move more effectively, where they have more collisions like that. So if temperature is too high, the enzyme molecule will vibrate too vigorously and the enzyme will start to denature. Denature means almost like dying or more like um, non-functional. But for this case, as enzyme, you cannot put as dying because enzymes itself is not suitable as a living organism. It's just more of like a 
a small little substance that help to increase the rate of reaction, right? So you just, every time you put the word denature is, is enough, okay? And it will lose its shape and no longer bind to the substrate. So when temperature is too low, there is not enough kinetic energy for the reaction. Therefore, it will be very slow. So you will have to understand this graph and how you uh, basically uh, understand how each of the section works. So we always love to put this section A, section B, and section C. So what is the difference actually? So you can see that this is the rate of enzyme activity. This is temperature. So you can see that if the, temp the optimum temperature is 37, so any temperatures before 37, the rate of reaction is very slow. But of course, if you start from zero degrees and you progress up to 37, of course, the kinetic energy starts to increase and there'll be a bit more collisions making the reaction a little bit more faster. But as you reach to the optimum temperature, you can see that at the point 37 degrees, it has the highest rate of reaction. That's why enzyme must have an optimum temperature so that it can be at the fastest rate of reaction possible. But once you increase the temperature, for example, here will be 50 degrees, you can see that the rate of reaction drops. So when the rate of reaction drops, it starts to denature at the same time. So the moment it denature, the active site begins to kind of change its shape on the enzyme, making the substrate that initially it can bind to it perfectly or complementary is not possible already because the active site has been changed and already modified due to the presence of high heat. So now we will see the second factor of enzyme activity, which is pH. So remember that like temperature, enzymes are also sensitive to pH, depending on whether it's an acidic condition or whether it's going to be a basic or alkaline condition. So some enzymes work best in acid, some will work best in alkaline. So you learn this a bit more in the digestive system or human nutrition where you learn about which some of the enzymes can work really efficiently in the stomach, for example, or live in the small intestine. So there are different enzymes. They can work in either the acidic condition or the basic condition. So enzyme, again, you work best at optimum pH. So each enzyme, depending on where is it found, it has its optimum pH. So if the pH changes, the hydrogen bond is broken, it will denature the enzyme, making it no longer fit with the subst substrate's active site. Therefore, no reaction occurs. So it's almost the same graph. We always love to split it to, to, to three section A, this is B, this is C. So let's say the pH is zero and the pH here is two. Here, this is five. So let's see, at pH zero, so when the pH starts to go a bit higher, the rate of reaction starts to increase because it's reaching nearer to its optimum pH. However, when it reaches its optimum pH, like pH 2, for example, it works very fast because it's at its optimum pH. So there'll be more collisions occurring. So the rate of reaction becomes faster. So remember in pH, you never use the term kinetic energy because the particles are not moving rapidly. This only applies to temperature. And of course, once you increase the pH further, where it deviates away from its optimum temperature, you can see that it also goes down. The rate of reaction starts to decrease and eventually it also denatures at a very high pH where it surpasses the optimum pH. All right, so that is it for this chapter. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you understand this very short video. Bye-bye.